Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm back at the shelter. I am here to tell you about a story. I want to try and start this video off with a story. Uh, it's not about me. It's about uh, the biggest manhunt in Canadian history. I told you about it. I told you a bit about it before uh, my last video. Uh, so I want to see how this goes. So here we go. So his name was Albert Johnson. And he, uh, he caused ruckus in Northern Canada in 1930. Uh, nobody knows where he came from, what her, his intentions were, why he was there, or anything about that. Didn't know his identity, they didn't know who he was again. He, they had no idea. So the story is, he showed up on the, the Rat River in the Yukon back in 1930 and he the first week he was there the natives uh, thought that he might have been messing around a bit with their trap lines so they called up the RCMP RCMP showed up at his house and he shot them. He shot them from his cabin um, and the next day they went to issue him a warrant because it was just one RCMP officer that showed up there came to issue him a warrant and this guy was prepared for the worst his cabin consisted of um, reinforced walls so like a log and another log parallel to that and he drilled peepholes in the logs to uh, for his gun for his 22 the next day he sh the next day the RCMP showed up they shot he shot another RCMP officer and this was back in 1930s um, and that's when they said you know we're, we're getting you know we're, we're getting we're gonna issue you a warrant for your arrest sorry I'm just drinking my Gatorade <sighs> So they went back with a warrant and they had a gunfight which lasted for 15 hours. Rat River in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, sorry. It was about minus 45 that night. Um, he shot another officer during the gunfight and um, Constable, I think his name was Constable Millen. He took one piece of dynamite, but it wouldn't light because it was about minus 45 and the wick was just, it snapped off like a twig. So he took out his other pieces of dynamite, three other pieces of dynamite, warmed them up by the fire that they put, tied the wicks together, four pieces of dynamite, four, lit the dynamite, threw it at his cabin, boom, his cabin explodes, his roof caves in, his walls are still up because they're reinforced, RCMP officers waited for about 20 to 30 seconds, and then marching in with their guns drawn, they didn't find him in there. They didn't find him in there. Like, where did he go? Next thing you know, after they're done searching for him in his cabin, they hear him laughing and see him running away. This guy just survived 
four sticks of dynamite being thrown at his cabin. So anyways, he's laughing and he's running away. This is when the manhunt, <clears throat> manhunt began. This manhunt lasted 240 kilometers over one month in wintertime in the Yukon. Uh, it's the first time that they used a bush plane. Um, so he was on, he was on the run for good reason. He climbed Mount, I think it was Mount McNeely in the Northwest Territories to get across to get a, yeah, okay. So he climbed the mountain and that's where the border was of Alaska and the Yukon. So he wanted to go to Alaska, but why he caused all that havoc, nobody knows. Anyways, fast forward. Uh, he was on the run. He was he was uh, evading officers. He had a ton of ammo on him. He had a he had a gun. He had he snared most of his food. Um, yeah, fast forward to when he was actually caught because for the pat for the next month or so he was just on the run no contact with anybody um evading evading cops for a whole month almost a month but when he came but when he came out i'm gonna get this straight <laughs> my first time telling the story so they issued out dog um dog sleds back then there were three dog sleds they were following the fraser river and they reached the peninsula and the leader of the dog sled halted everybody he halted all of his dog team his uh his workers his dog teams his um anyways And he looked out, he looked over the corner of the peninsula and he saw Albert Johnson. That's what he went by, Albert Johnson. He saw him come out of the tree line, getting ready to tie up his snowshoes. He's tying up the snowshoes. And he looked, Albert Johnson looked over and he saw the RCMP officers. RCMP officers had their guns drawn right on him, started firing, but he just, he jumped in the snow and he ran away. He ran to a big frozen lake. So they started having a gunfight in the middle of the lake. And the officers were just shooting snow because they didn't know where he went. They were shooting snow, but one officer went to the top of the hill and saw a little kind of broken snow broken snow and he kind of saw some movement in there he knew offhand that that was him because no animals or anything would be sticking around then so he got up his gun he fired three shots one of them hit him in the back the other one in the top of the butt um, and the other one in the thigh so pretty much around the same area he noticed a little bit more rustling in the snow and after maybe about 20 seconds, no rustling, no rustling in the snow. So the officer shot him, but they went down and they had no idea who this man was. They went over to his body very slowly, prodded at his body, turned his body over and Albert Johnson, the rat, mad, mad trapper of Rat River, had a grimace on his face. He was smiling from ear to ear. Again, 240 kilometers, four officers killed. First time that they used a Cessna or a bush plane. And 
no positive ID. He had about $1,000 on him, uh, a pocket full of a pocket full of 22s, and they <laughs> he died. I'm really interested in the story because, well, one of many reasons, <coughs> he died on my birthday, February 17th. He was buried, and fast forward, maybe about, oh God, maybe 40, 50 years, uh, his body was excavated by the Discovery Channel, did a uh, DNA test uh, analysis and all that they, he, they still don't know the lineage of him where he came from why he was there what his intentions were they had to use uh, a backhoe to actually get his body out because of the permafrost he had I think it was spina bifida. I, I think he, he had sort of some sort of spinal infusion, spinal um, deformity. But to this day, again, 240 kilometers, nobody knew who he was, where he was. They didn't know who he was. And that's. He just wanted to be left alone, but the, the thing is, with people in the north, they check on each other during snowstorms, uh, during whatever. It's a community that they check on people, and he just wanted to be left alone. And he started causing havoc, and the cops were shot. If you don't know who he is, look him up. And that's my story. So that's a bit of Canadian history, an unfortunate history. I read the book a few times. I've seen a few documentaries on him and these things just really interest me. Not for the killings, just for the story behind it. That's my story. And I hope you all enjoy that. And join me while I work on the inside of the shelter. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.